Hello again SGBers, I'm Companion Wolf. Welcome to another Smile Game Builder tutorial. The topic of this video is customizing some more of the system graphics, namely Windows, specifically message windows, as well as giving my own thoughts and insights on things I found about their creation. Before I start the tutorial, I'd like to mention something, kind of putting the record straight on a few things if you like. I do receive quite a number of requests for future tutorials and how-tos, but many of them don't end up in the tutorials. This isn't because I've forgotten about them, it's because some things in SGB just aren't possible yet. I know that despite being a relatively powerful and easy to use engine in itself, SGB is still in its infancy, therefore is still limited in its scope, and this means that it lacks in certain areas. Many people want to push SGB to beyond its capabilities and create more dynamic customized content such as functional ATS with a complete HUD. I am one of them. But at this point in its evolution, it's just not possible easily or effectively. However, when I make tutorials, I keep the suggestions and how-tos in mind and try to base them loosely on these suggestions or find solutions to the problems that might occur. I try then to find effective ways of doing this rather than focusing on things that would overcomplicate the process unnecessarily. So if you suggest ideas for your tutorials or how-tos, it doesn't necessarily mean that I don't value them or that I've discounted them as one person seemed to think. It means that presently there's no effective way of implementing them in SGB or I'm still trying to figure out ways to create them. And no doubt with the comparatively regular updates that Smileboom does, many of these features or functionality may be implemented in the future and rest assured that when these new features major features do come out I will announce them here and with that said let's get on with the tutorial the topic of this tutorial as I mentioned in the beginning is specifically the message windows you can of course create and customize other areas as well such as selectors so this will most likely expand into future tutorials as there are quite a number of things to cover the main focus here however is just the message window your basic regular window is 128 by 128 pixels and windows with repeated patterns are generally 60 by 60 in this panel here, it's been magnified so it appears much larger than it actually is. If you have a border for normal windows, all four corners will be stretch scaled to fit, whereas for repeating patterns, the borders won't be scaled per se. We'll go into that shortly. To demonstrate what I mean, let's use one of the windows I pre-created. Um, so I'm going to use the Final Fantasy V styled window and reset it to its default settings when you first upload it. Here's a screenshot. As you can see from this in-game screenshot, it's really stretched out. Not how it's supposed to look at all. Furthermore, the text is completely misaligned with the border. So we need to go back into the game images and the windows again um, to adjust the border sizes. For those familiar with web design, this here under the windows settings is kind of like the padding and contain properties and cascading style sheets. It works in a very similar fashion. The maximum border settings are 30 each. So if we set each of these to 21 uh, final 21 like so 
it'll look more like it should, as you can see from this screenshot. Another way of doing it is patterning. So reset the borders back to zero again. And then check the display in a pattern. The border sizes can be tweaked accordingly until they disappear and the window fills the entire panel. I'm going to set each of these borders to 12. Like so. <clears throat> and uh, just like the previous screenshot, this will display the same way it did in the first method. Both will display as they should in the game. If we now take a look at another one that I created, the parchment window, this is set up a little differently, but it still works in the same way. This particular design won't work as a tiled pattern because even with the maximum amounts you'll still have the edges within the content itself. The reason it, this particular design won't work as a tile pattern is because its border is integrated as a seamless message rather than the inner content. So in this case, if any of the borders are adjusted, it'll just appear as a tiled image rather than a full image. So in this case, if any of the borders are adjusted, you can see that the pattern itself within will stretch. Like so. And if these are all set to zero from the screenshot, you can see it works just fine. But with the left and right edges a tad overstretched to give it that perhaps worn edged parchment feel but to adjust the edges to something more consistent with the top and bottom borders I think probably three each for the left and right borders should work here's another screenshot and yes it does look much better as a whole doesn't it you can play around with these settings until you're satisfied with the results. For tiled patterns, the border adjusts the padding accordingly on each of the tile patterns, leaving an outer border with the window containing its texture. For untiled patterns, the image between the borders is stretched and adjusted, virtually leaving the borders intact. So to implement your customized windows, you need to go into your edit game data and then into system graphics. Let me just quickly reset these. like so. Okay, here you will see the three available options. Message window, menu window and selection window. I'll leave the last one alone for now, but we'll cover that in a future tutorial. One thing to note here is that message window and menu window are a bit misleading or perhaps just incorrectly named. Message window only applies to dialog windows when using the display dialog event command and not to the actual message window, as the name implies. Menu window applies to windows when using both the display message command for normal messages and the main status windows. So for now, let's change menu window to parchment. So in the playtest, the regular message window, 
produces the parchment. You'd think that logically the top message window setting would change the window, but it doesn't. As you have seen, it only affects the dialog window. We'll see that shortly. So pressing the X or cancel key will bring up the status menu, which is now also the parchment menu. So now if we go back into the system graphics and change the message window to Final Fantasy 5.1 and then disable this one but re-enable these these are ones I've pre-created so we'll use the display dialog instead with just a brief little thingy here right done what will happen is this As you can see here, this is the Final Fantasy one. And incidentally, the graphic I've used here is a character I've been experimenting with. Some of you have already seen him, named Branig Guithnol, who is an ex-gladiator grown fat by his successes. If you want to know more, I'll put the link to the description below. Note that he will be appearing in my next game for RPG Maker MV, the gladiator program, Cabal, which I am um, aiming for working on in August to September. However, as you can see here, the parchment is used for the status and the follow one would be for the regular messages as well. So let's create a window from scratch. I'm using GIMP for this, but the same applies to whatever graphics editors you use. Create a new one, set the pixel 18, 128 by 128. <coughs> And then in, in the advanced, set background color to transparency. We'll create a simple borderless window using the fill tool. So we'll use crinkled paper, fill it in. Now I don't think this is entirely seamless, but GIMP has a tool, I believe it's under maps, um, a filter not a tool, and you can make this seamless. It'll basically render it as a seamless image. So let's export as. Um, we'll just put it in the Smile Game Builder. Rename it. Crinkled Paper Window. As before, be sure to uncheck the interlacing because otherwise it'll become corrupted in SGB. And I really don't know why that would be. And once we've exported it, we'll simply add it to the windows. 
Um, Control paper window. Like so. Um, you'll actually notice that the image will stretch to fit, but excluding the borders. But it's a tiled pattern, and probably won't make any difference. Yeah, it's not really truly s seamless. So we can just use this. And then back into the edit game data. change to this so you can see what it looks like within the window itself the image will stretch to fit the entire window regardless if it's seamless borderless or just regular It's just a matter of experimenting, then making further adjustments as you need to, to get it right. If this is the first video you've watched in my Smile Game Builder tutorial series, I'd recommend you also watch Tutorial 30, Customizing Hidden System Graphics, in which I show how to customize the message cursor like I've done here. And I'll continue with customizing the system in hidden graphics in future tutorials. And in the meantime, this concludes another tutorial. If you found this video useful, give it a like and subscribe for more videos. Don't forget to click on the bell icon as well next to the subscribe if you want to be informed of when I upload more content. You can also follow me on Twitter and Facebook for news, updates on all of my projects, and sometimes unique content I don't put anywhere else. And incidentally, I started writing regular weekly tutorials on the SGB subsite as well, in addition to these videos, of course. That's it for another tutorial. Thanks for watching. Until the next time.